Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to be sharing four different crock pot meals or slow cooker meals, whichever you wanna call it. And all four of these that I'm sharing, we all loved. There's not one out of the bunch that I could say that we just didn't like. We literally loved them all. I would say this is probably my favorite crock pot meal video to date, just because they were all so good. Even the kids liked a couple of them. So I am excited to share these with you guys. And so let's get on into cooking. So first up, we're going to be making a crock pot tortellini and sausage soup. This was by far my favorite meal out of the bunch. We've got some frozen tortellini, chicken broth, Italian sausage, a can of Hunt's diced tomatoes. I got the basil, garlic, and oregano flavor. I use a little bit of Parmesan cheese at the end just to top it with a block of cream cheese. And then I also decided to add some Italian seasoning in there too that's not pictured. But this goes down as my number two all-time favorite crock pot meal recipe. Number one being my white chicken chili. Seriously, this is amazing. So I hope you guys enjoy it. So the first thing I did is just brown up my Italian sausage and then drain it. If you like to cook up meat ahead of time and have it in your freezer, this would be perfect just to take it out of the freezer and dump it right in. But if not, just go ahead and cook it, drain it, dump it in the pot, then dump your whole bag of tortellini pasta in, your Hunt's diced tomatoes not drained, and then um, four cups of chicken broth is how much I used. Dump it on in there. And then I did add a little bit of Italian seasoning. I just stuck it in my hand and broke it up a little bit like that. I really don't know. Um, I just decided to do that. Andrea here, Plasma Speedos, she does that. And she says it breaks up the flavors. So I decided to try it. I mean, I think it tasted amazing. So it probably worked. Um, and then a block of cubed cream cheese. Stir it all around. Put the lid on and then cook it on low for four hours. This is what it looked like halfway through. I just took the lid off of it. You don't really have to do this step, but I wanted to make sure the green cheese got nice and combined in there. But if not, this is how it looks after the four hours of cooking. And at this point, you could add three or four cups of spinach and let fresh spinach and let that um, cook in there for another 30 minutes, but we didn't have any fresh spinach. I forgot to get it. Um, but this is how it was after four hours, soupy, creamy deliciousness with not a lot of ingredients. It doesn't get better than that. And I did top mine with a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese and then it was good to serve. We seriously love this and I cannot wait to have this again. If you try any of these, this would be my pick for you. Next up, we've got the popular Olive Garden chicken pasta. We had not tried this yet. We're a little late to the game. So if you haven't tried it, I do suggest it. We loved it. I've got two chicken breasts that were still slightly frozen, a whole container of the Olive Garden Italian dressing, some pepper, penne pasta, Parmesan cheese, cream cheese. And then I also decided to add in a bag of frozen broccoli florets to it as well, just to make this more of a one pot meal for our family. So I didn't have to make anything on the side and it turned out really good with that broccoli in it too. So if you haven't tried that in it, that is a suggestion. So first thing, just literally put your chicken in there, how much ever you need for your family or want with your pasta. Um, and then dump your Italian dressing, your cream cheese right on top of there. Then one fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese and we'll use a little bit more of that later. A fourth a teaspoon of pepper and then I also added in my frozen broccoli at this point too. Stuck the lid on and cooked it on high for four hours. After the four hours, you wanna take your chicken out and shred it. You can either do the two fork method or like I like to do, I use a hand mixer to shred it up really good. It does make a little bit of a mess in my bowl sometimes, um, but it's totally, totally worth it for how shredded it gets it. When there was about 25 minutes until it was done, I went ahead and cooked my pasta and I had that sitting out to the side before I shredded my chicken. You want to stir all the other stuff together really good before adding the chicken back in. And then I went ahead and added my pasta in. Then you stir it all together really well. Add another fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese on top and that is it. I've heard with this Olive Garden pasta that everybody's been talking about that you either love it or you hate it. And we absolutely loved it, y'all. Definitely give this one a try if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. 
the next crock pot meal I'm going to be sharing is a sweet and sour kielbasa with peppers and onions with it. And this one was really good too. There's, I have nothing bad to say. So we've got a thing of kielbasa, a red and a yellow pepper, an onion, some brown sugar, a can of pineapple tidbits, and some barbecue sauce. I will say I would do probably just a little bit less of the tidbits. It was a bit much for us because we're not crazy about pineapple. So first thing I did was cut up all my veggies into chunks. So the peppers, onions, and then I'll also cut up the kielbasa. Once you get everything cut up, you want to go ahead and dump in your kielbasa and your veggies right into the crock pot and then add everything else in. So the whole can of pineapples, not drained, so you want the juice in all. It adds a really good flavor mix with the other stuff that's going to be in it. Like I said, I would do a little bit less of the pineapples if I did this again. Then we've got a half a cup of brown sugar and one and a half cups of barbecue sauce, which was that entire container that you saw in the beginning. I didn't realize it was going to take the entire container, but you want a cup and a half. Then you close the crock pot and cook it on low for four hours. Here's what it looked like after four hours, nice and bubbly, looking yummy, very steamy. Um, I did stir it halfway through, you didn't really have to, but I decided to. And when I was serving this, I used a slotted spoon that had so it could drain a little bit because it was very runny, but I didn't mind that because just more flavors that it was sitting in. The flavor was very sweet and tangy at the same time. I was a little worried that it would taste too much like pineapple, but it was actually really yummy. The kids loved the kielbasa that was in it. They asked for thirds and fourths, so that was a huge win. We served it with some scalloped potatoes on the side, and since everybody loved it, if I had to make this again, less pineapple, more kielbasa. The next crock pot meal that I'm making is something that I've made similar in the oven so you can make it like a one sheet meal as well but for the crock pot I used a pack of chicken tenderloins or you could use chicken breast too whatever you have some red potatoes a packet of that zesty Italian dressing and then how much ever I thought we needed for our family of some fresh green beans and then also one stick of butter the only prep work for this one was to obviously first wash your potatoes, but then cut them up into the size, bite size pieces that you want for your family and your liking. And then for the green beans, I broke off the ends of them since they are fresh green beans. I don't have much experience with fresh green beans. Still kind of new, like I'm loving trying new ways to make them though. And so after I broke off the ends, I also snapped them into the sizes that I wanted them as well. You could leave them whole though. Then you dump everything into the crock pot. So I did the chicken in the middle and then potatoes on one side and gr green beans on the other. And normally with chicken meals in the crock pot, I'm a little weird about it. Like a lot of them taste too chickeny for me, if that makes sense. Like I like the ones that are shredded up with lots of flavor. So I was trying to do that with this. First thing I did was make sure the butter got very coated on everything. So I kind of tossed it around individually and then the same for the seasoning. I kind of did a little bit on top of everything, then flipped it all over, made sure, especially on the chicken, that it was very, very well coated. After I got it all seasoned really good, popped the lid on, and then I cooked mine on four hours on high, or you could do it on low for like six to seven hours. You just wanna make sure that chicken is done to temp. 
and here it is when it was done. I do think I overcooked the chicken a little bit. I waited a little over four hours before we were ready to eat. Um, the potatoes and green beans were amazing with that seasoning on them. The chicken did have that good seasoning flavor too. It was just a little overcooked for hours, but um, this is definitely a go-to recipe that's really easy. And I do, I have made a version of this, like I said in the beginning, um, as a sheet pan meal too. So you could try cooking it in the oven like that too if you don't want to do it in the crock pot. But overall, this was a really yummy one too, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that it provided you with some new easy meal ideas for those busy weeknights for you and your family. Um, if you're new here, I would love to have you subscribe and stick around. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye y'all.